Hotel Echo Lima Lima Oscar Good evening from London England live and exclusive or should I say good morning to you guys if you're just getting up good afternoon if you're having a lovely day or allow me to say good night and rest well after a long day you're tired you've got work other commitments etc from your host your guy himself the one and only and truly here I am DLG Reppin short for Dele London Guna Space Romeo Echo Papa Papa Indigo November so I'm going to be doing my roundup of all the Premier League goals from the 10 fixtures over the course of the weekend and last night and right, before I get my teeth sunk uh, before I get my teeth sunk into it I would like you to um, smash the thumbs up like button all over the world. No matter if you're an Arsenal fan, football fan, what team you support, what skin colour you are, your culture, your religion, etc. Smash the thumbs up like button for me. Drop your response, your rev- your messages, your own personal opinions into the comment section below where positive feedback belongs from your guy himself, DLG Repping. Also, share this channel virally, yeah? All over the globe. Make sure your friends and your relatives get hold of this, get hold of this channel and start watching it religiously. <laughs> hey, I'm watching. Also, if you're watching for the first time, get your friends and family to, to share. And yes, get your friends and family to subscribe. Smash that button for me, left, right and centre, but passionately. Let's get the subscribe numbers going. And speaking of subscribers, shout out to two new subscribers. The reason why I'm excited about... The, uh, uh, the reason why I'm excited right now is because the two of you, one of you became the, the 208th and another, become the, and another became the 209th subscriber to my channel. I don't care if it's a he, she, what race you are, age, culture, religion, where in the world you come from. You're more than welcome to subscribe to my channel. And I'll say thank you for the love and I appreciate the so the, the sub. I appreciate the love and the, the commitment that you've shown to my channel. Keep me going, yeah? And that's what happens when you subscribe to the channel. I'll shout you out, yeah? Massive shout out to yourselves. So let's get into the Premier League um, review. And that's all 10 fixtures. Starting at um, King Power Stadium, Leicester City v Leeds United, which I had the privilege to watch on um, BT Sport. Now, I'll tell you something, yeah? I think Leeds United um, had the better of the opportunities in the first half. I can tell you that Peter Schmeichel had to make some amazing saves in the first half, especially in this first half. I think Leeds were... On the front foot, and um, Leicester had um, had plenty of possession. I didn't think they created as much as they did. But in the second half, you can clearly see they were the better team, more on the front foot with the urgency. And Harvey Barnes gets a good goal, good um, little one-two with Adam Mola Lukman, and um, he slots it in at the far post. Fine finish, one nil Leicester. Leeds United, however, did push for the um, equaliser. And one thing I will say about Leeds, defensively, they look a lot more disciplined and a lot more um, solid at the back. And they look um, a lot more organised. So we might see a different type of Leeds come the, um, the rest of the season. However, it finished Leicester City 1, Leeds United 0. Aston Villa v Southampton. Oh, well, I think there was only one team in this and it wasn't Southampton. They just couldn't get near the Villa boys, especially Coutinho. What a player and what a performance. And what, or should I say, what a man of the match performance from Philippe Coutinho. Outstanding. For me, the best player on that park. And you could see um, how he um, dictated the midfield and he was running the show. From start to finish. And Villa. Well they got off to a, a flying start. 
on the front foot. Ollie Watkins took his goal extremely well in the ninth minute, I believe. And then um, Coutinho um, provided um, Doug Lloris with um, his goal. And in the second half, it, well, it was Aston Villa. So Rampton had um, opportunities to um, at least get a consolation. Emiliano Martinez had to make a fine save from Che, che Adams um, before um, Coutinho um, found in it himself. Good little play and a clean shot. And for me... Oli Watkins said it on his um, post-match interview. He, the way he thinks, he thinks quicker than anybody in the squad. And, well, I don't disagree with him there. And the fourth goal, Danny Ings, he had to get onto the score sheet after one or two efforts that he had earlier. And for me, Gerard had every right to be um, thankful and very um, praising of his... Um, team and the couple of players in his team so it finished Aston Villa 4 Southampton nil. Burnley v Chelsea now I'll tell you what first half I thought Burnley had the better of the chances and they should have gone into the interview if not 2 new up at least 1 new up they were the better team in that first half and that's without a shadow of a doubt Chelsea they weren't um, exactly as organised at the back, and they weren't on top of their game. They were all over the shop at some point, especially their defence, all over the shop. In the second half, they had to improve, and improve they did. They got onto the front foot, and Reese James, what a good goal, turning the, the turning the Burnley defence inside and out before unleashing a right-footed um, shot at the far stick, 1-0 Chelsea. And then the goals came within up to seven, eight, nine minutes, the second good team, good team attacking goal, good attacking um, team play by Chelsea. Reese James, the provider. No, the provider was um, Pelusic, fine cross. Havertz, all you had to do is just get his head on it and it hits the target, hit the target, it did 2 0. And then, yeah, the goal that I was talking about, good team attacking goal by Chelsea. Um. Good intricate play, very quick and slick. Reese James teeing up home habits for his second of the game, Chelsea's third of the game. And then, um, well, saving the best to last. Well, the Olays came out after um, Reese James done a good um, 360 turn. They kept passing the ball amongst his soul. Very slick, very quick, too quick for Burnley. And um, Pelusic gets onto the score sheet. And they said in commentary that he loves scoring against Burnley. Well, he had a hat-trick against Burnley on his debut, I believe. And he gets another goal. So it finished um, Burnley nil, Chelsea 4. Newcastle United v Brighton Hove Albion. Newcastle um, making improvements um, in the last four or five weeks. And um, you can see it. They're playing with a blend of, uh, of abundance of confidence. They found um, an identity in their football. Well, they found an identity that they believe in and a philosophy of football they're playing. I think it's come from Eddie Howe. And um, you can see the confidence in the players in the team. And I think the first goal, they, I think the first goal was scored by... Um, oh, no. I can't forget. He got the first goal. I'll tell you what, Ryan Fraser had um, a say in the first goal. He got himself an assist. And I think he played a part in the second goal. Or oh, I'll need to have a look at the video. Oh. I know Lewis Dunk got a consolation, which is um, from a corner, set piece. And Brighton were always going to be dangerous at set pieces. Although I think they were much um, the better team in the second half, but without a cutting edge. However, Newcastle were absolutely on top of their game. Jacob Murphy breezing past the Burnley def um, Brighton defence until um, Ryan, Fraser, Ryan Fraser um slotted um, the rebound from six yards out. He wasn't going to miss the target. And I think he played a part in the second goal, I believe. He was absolutely outstanding. Done in done his job defensively, um, helped the team out 
and offensively, well, unplayable at times. It finished Newcastle United 2, Brighton over Albion 1. Next game, Norwich City v Brighton. I mean, Brentford, should I say. Norwich City v Brentford. Uh, what can I say? I mean, early doors of the first half or, or in the game, you would thought Norwich were in the front foot. They had an opportunity. Ruzicka, um he should have gone with his left foot. I don't know why he's going with the right foot. Nevertheless, good save by the um, Brentford goalkeeper. Um, Brentford um, had a long throw. I think they. I think um, there was an honest effort on goal. I think it was saved, if I can remember. Brentford, Norwich fans, you can help me on this one. However, the corner comes in, in swinger, a flick on, and Iron Tony from three yards out. He wasn't, well, three, maybe two yards out, maybe. He wasn't going to miss the target. And in the second half, Norwich just completely collapsed. Two penalties um, conceded. The first one conceded by the same centre-half, Ben Gibson. Martial art kick in the face. VAR had to, well, the referee had to go to VAR, monitor, have a look at it one time. Easy. Easy decision. Penalty. And well taken um, by um, Ivan Tony. And then the second penalty, it was without a shadow of a doubt, a stone waller. And Ben Gibson, why is he complaining? He has no he has no rights to complain. He knows he's giving that penalty away. And Ivan Tony slots it in the same place, although Tim Crawl went the right way, but he couldn't um, get his hand on it because it was a very good penalty. Nevertheless, um, Norwich had a goal disallowed, and rightfully so, because Puki was offside. But um, Timo Puki gets a consolation, and that was all it was, a consolation. I think Brentford were worthy of the three points and value for it. So it finished Norwich 1, Brentford 3. Next game, Wolves v Crystal Palace. Are, for me, Palace are absolutely outstanding from an attacking point of view. And I think they de- they deserve to be, um, be credited for the football they play under Vieira. Good set of attacking players. Ooh, it's been a long, long day. At work, but nevertheless, I'm still here. Um, Wilfred Saha causing them all ends of problems, and you got to think that they still have Eberichi Ese um, getting nearer to fitness from after being injured for a lengthy, a lengthy amount of time. So he's another problem there, and they had other problems. Jeffrey Shop, I think he got onto the score sheet or got the penalty, which was converted, but. Wilfred Zaha, was it? Did Palace have a penalty or was Jeffrey Shop um, on the score sheet? I'm not too sure. And the sec- no, Mateta, he got onto the score sheet and, um, well, he was never going to miss from where he was. And I think um, Wilfred Zaha might have got onto the score sheet for a penalty. But Wolves, yeah, they don't help themselves. They've been <sighs> lethargic, very flat. And a little bit boring to watch at times. And they were better than that, Wolves. But I didn't see anything of Wolves um that particular game. And I thought Palace were, were um, value for their three points. It finished Wolverhampton 100 nil, Crystal Palace 2. Liverpool v West Ham United. Now, I'll tell you something. Um, During that first half, throughout the whole game, I thought in the first half alone, West Ham had a number of opportunities to score. Um, the best chance of the game for West Ham United fell to um, Fornells, who went for a, a clever um, dink over the goalkeeper. He did get the ball over him, but give massive, tremendous credit to um, Alexander Arnold. He recovered well and um, cleared like three foot off the line, and then Ellison made a good save, although. I think um, the West Ham player, uh, maybe Lanzini, went round, pushed the ball to the side of him, got the shot away, but um, it was deflected. And Alexander Arnold had to make sure that it was um, out of harm's way when he cleared it for a corner. However, Liverpool had um, an early chance in that game. Mohamed Salah put through by a clever, quick bit of thinking by Trent Alexander Arnold. 
that was before the West Ham opportunity and um, it was well safe for Fabianski. There was nothing much Fabianski can do for the Liverpool goal as um, the ball was um, played ac um, across the field. Alexander Arnold first touch on the chest, beautiful. Had a effort on goal. It was going wide, but Sadio Mane made sure he was just on side and tapped in, in um, Liverpool's um, opener. However, West Ham came at um, Liverpool with opportunities. The four nails one I spoke about earlier, and in the second half, I mean, not even the not even just the four nails. Yet Antonio had a shot on target, probably creeping at the near post, maybe. In the second half, West Ham had um, a number of opportunities to get um, on the score sheet. And I would have thought Liverpool would have been strong favourites to win the game comfortably, but it wasn't to be. And I think they were just happy to get the result. It finished Liverpool 1, West Ham United 0. Now on to Sunday's game. Watford v Arsenal. That was um, the first game of the um, Super Sunday. And for me... Arsenal were absolutely tremendous up until the last five minutes. But in the first half, in complete control for me. I disagree with what Mikel Arteta said about Arsenal not having the control of the game. Well, in that first half, they were in complete control. All right, the first minute, we got the offside trap um, right by judgment, then more by luck than judgment. Then this was... Um, Put through. He thought he was put through, and he slotted well, but he was um, ruled out for offside. And then four, f four maybe, yeah, about three, four minutes later, um, yeah, good bit of um, an offensive play by the Arsenal, and um, what a good team goal by um, Arsenal, finished off by Odigo, assisted by Bukayo Saka. But I'll tell you what. As an Arsenal fan, I have to say, Cucho Hernandez has possibly got the goal of the season. Well, if not season, goal of the month in that game. What a, what a, what a great bit of technique. The technique was absolutely phenomenal. To do an overhead kick in that situation where you're 1-0 down, you're second from bottom of the league, and you need something out of nothing and... I'll tell you what, they've got a hell of a player that I don't think they'll keep for the long term, especially if, if their relegation is confirmed to the championship. However, I can say that with Dennis and a number of other players, but this guy, he, he, I'll tell you what, I applaud him, I'll take my hat off for him. What a, what a goal, what a goal. It's assisted by Akiko Firmina and that just shows you from a defensive point of view that we won't tight on him. You could say Kieran Tierney could be tighter on Kiko Firmino. You could say our center off Gabriel Magalis and, um, or should I say Gabriel Dos Santos Magalis and Benjamin White could be a lot, a tad tighter on um, Cucho Hernandez, but take nothing away from the Colombian international. The overhead kick is just difficult technique. I don't see myself even trying that. Not even in the park <laughs> on a Sunday morning. I applaud him. However, Arsenal responded with a great goal of themselves. Another good team goal, assisted by Lacazette. One, the ball won by Bakayo Saka. He passes it to Lacazette. Lacazette back heels it to um, to Bakayo Saka. Saka hits it top bins. Wow, what a goal! And then from that, I thought we deserved to go into the interval two one up, and then. Second half, we come out of the traps. I think the 30 minutes of the second half, we were absolutely outstanding. Gabriel Martinelli gets possibly the best goal of the game, the best out of the three Arsenal goals, although I prefer to go with Saka. Don't get me wrong, Martinelli's goal was absolutely phenomenal. Top beans again, and um, yeah, you can see what it meant for him, what it meant to the fans. He, I think both the fans and him understood each other by the celebrations and we were in complete control. We had opportunities after opportunities and we didn't take them because we allowed a sloppy goal at the other end with four minutes to go. So Soko gets um, a consolation and um, it was, um, from our point of view, poor, poor goal to concede. 
it's enough to pee you off because we should have at least won it by at least minimum three goals, if not four or five clear goals. And it pees me off that we're three one up. We were three one up, and then Sissoko get, um, receives um, the ball from across. And Benjamin White, he's got to be prepared to win the ball. He's like he's half won the ball. He's got to win the ball at 100%. Not half win the ball. Allow Sissoko to ricochet past you and slot past Aaron Ramsdale. And it left Arsenal in a nervy situation. And I mean a nervy situation. But nevertheless, we held on for the three points. Watford 2, Arsenal 3. Monday, um, the next game, Manchester City v... Man United, and wow. Man City started off the game brightly and finished off the game brightly, and Kevin De Bruyne from an assist on the left, I think from Bernardo Silva who or Caseo. Kevin De Bruyne was not going to miss from where he was. He wasn't going to miss a target. It was either the hair make a save or the ball bulging in the net, and it was the ball bulging in the net. 1-0 Man City. Um, give Man United credit where it's, credit is due. They came out, they showed us some character, which was only shown by Jaden Santa, and I think he's had a good um, couple of games, more than a good couple of games of recently. And um, for me, he's probably been their best performer in the last three, four games. And he gets himself a fine goal. But I question the Man City defender or defenders for allowing him. I think the defender who was on him, it was meant to be Carl Walker. In that case, what is he doing allowing Jaden Sancho on his strong foot? I will never know, but... Can't take away the finish. However, Man City showed that personality that they've been showing for the last three to five years. And, you know, they kept going, kept playing their brand of football. And the desire to win the ball back was absolutely fantastic. You know, this is what Pep does. And the the beautiful side of the game is to have the ball and play that beautiful football. But the ugly side of the game is to press and Man City do it better than anyone in the Premier League right now. Fact. And um, they kept going. And I think De Bruyne gets his second goal of the game. <clears throat> to the disgust of De Gea, who tried his best to keep Man United in that um, derby. And then, from there on, I think Riyad Mahrez, um, in the second half, gets a, an amazing goal from a corner. And, well... Saving the best to last. He's put through just on side and he gets himself um, an, another goal on the score sheet. But Manchester United's performance was absolutely oh, beyond abysmal. I can't even describe the word. Absolutely dogs S. That bad. And Roy Keane ripped into the Manchester United team, even the football club. And that takes a lot. For for someone like Roy King to do that after seeing that performance, he had to tell the good, honest, brutal truth. And that's Roy King. He's got the guts to say what a lot of um, pundits wouldn't dare say, but he had to say it. Calling Harry Maguire garbage live on national television. Does that man care? You ask him to his face and you see what you get. You'll get the truth and nothing but the truth. Um, it finished Man City 4, Manchester United 1. Game on Sun, um, The game last night, Tottenham v Everton. Well, there was only one team toothless and it weren't Tottenham Hotspur. Everton were absolutely toothless in every way, shape and form. All over that pitch. There's no desire, no motivation, no fight. And they're in a relegation battle. And for me, um, they might have started the game rightly in the first 10 minutes, inside the first 10 minutes, but Tottenham stepped up the level and um, they upped the gear. And before you know it, an own goal that uh, kicked it off by Michael King. And um, within a few, a few more minutes, just a few minutes, not even that long, him and Song gets on the score sheet. Jordan Pickford should have saved that. And then, well, Ali again defending it with a high line and getting picked out quick so easily and Harry Kane's put through on goal. One on one of the goalkeeper, he's not missing the target and not missed the target he didn't because he made it three nil. And then oh in the second half they were just 
worse than woeful. You know, a lot worse than the first half. A goal, well, a goal is conceded because you're defending, because your defenders are not good enough or the defence is not good enough or a bit of both. And, Re- and Regilon, um, the back stick there, getting a tap in. And then Harry Kane sums up his night with a fine um, individual, vo- a fine volley. And um, it just sums up the, the mark of the man and, and the footballer that he is. Finished top the Mots for five, Everton nil. And that's the end of uh, my um, review. I know it's a long one, longer than I expected. But, you know, so much talking points to go through. And I'll say thank you to the ladies and gentlemen, to the boys, to the girls for putting up with me. Well, thank you to the ladies and to the ladies, gentlemen, to the boys, to the girls. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, as I always say, saving the best to last. Thank you for putting up with me, as I already just said. Sorry about that. And um, peace, love and bless again. I hope you enjoyed the video. And um, I'd like to hear your comments in the comment section. I'd like to hear your views in the comment section below, your messages. Smash the thumbs up like button in abundance. Share this channel and do subscribe where I can shout you out beautifully. Peace, love and bless again. Um, Take care of your friends, take care of your families, take care of yourselves. And until next time, DLG Repping, we will talk again. All that I need to say is just please be nice.